Okay, peeps, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about LTCN, BCHG, and the rest of the Grayscale Trusts, and how there might be some seriously deep dip buying opportunities in the in immediate short-term to mid-short-term future. With that being said, let's get it. All right, so I probably sound funny today. I apologize about that, guys, but I am sick. Uh, I caught some kind of cold over the last couple of days, and... Uh, it sucks, but it is what it is. <clears throat> Sick or not, um, we're going to be here doing this for you guys. We don't intend to stop unless we drop dead. Um, so that's kind of the goal here. But So before we get into the charts, um, first I want to show you guys our portfolios again. So yes, we did get out of LTCM, but we picked up a couple new trusts as of late. And you guys are probably like, what the hell? Why did you sell out of LCC and a BCHG? Guys, it's real simple, okay? We took profits off the table. We're rotating some of that capital into some of the other trusts that are deeply discounted. We literally made a video on this talking about grayscale trust rotations. And we're literally doing exactly what we talked about, okay? This should not come as a surprise to anybody. So anyways, with that being said... um, so we uh, still do have ETCG, as you guys can see here. We obviously have a significant amount more cash. We'll get into that in a minute. So ETCG, uh, sixty ninety eight per share. We picked up some GBAT here, so a couple thousand dollars worth. Uh, we were actually quite aggressive on this buy because we think GBAT is pretty much um, very close to its bottom, if not already at its bottom. Again, this thing has come down nearly 80% from its recent local high. So for us, that that alone by itself is enough to pick up the dip. So again, $7.92 a share. We got 255 shares here, as you guys can see. And it's already up 5%. Now, 5% is not much, but to get back to the previous high, this thing would have to go up about 3.5x. So we have HN. Uh, we're still waiting for it to get into that zone to pick up more. And the Grayscale MetaTrust, um, as you guys know, Decentraland did a 200x by itself last cycle. So we suspect this one's probably going to heavily outperform the cycle uh, based on the whole Metaverse narrative. <clears throat> and there is some correlation between the underlying and these Grayscale Trusts. For those people that are out there saying, oh, you can't really compare the Grayscale Trust to the native cryptos. Dude, these people don't know what the hell they're talking about. Okay, look, the Grayscale Trusts literally own the underline and they have the tokens and they make shares for you to buy based on that okay i think it's like for every share you get exposure to 100 tokens think of it like this okay um i'll give you guys an analogy here so in grayscale let's say i own one share of ltcn right and one share of ltcn has a hundred litecoin in it where it's it's basically exposure to the price action of 100 litecoin which is probably why probably why the premiums happen because again it's not one share to one litecoin it's one share to 100 litecoin so that's probably why the explosive you know outsized gains happen in these trusts um, again i don't know much about the premiums and the discounts but it's easy to put two and two together so i'll give you guys an analogy here okay in futures trading one contract of full size gold, the gold contracts, we can uh, look at that in a minute if you guys want, is equal to a hundred ounces of gold. Okay. So when I'm trading one contract of gold in the futures market, I have a notional value of the basically whatever a hundred ounces or a thousand ounces, something like that, of gold is. Okay. So it's one contract but it's worth a hundred ounces of gold. And is it, is it costing me a hundred ounces of gold to trade that contract? No, but it gives me exposure to a much greater value. It, this is that, that analogy with futures is very similar to these grayscale trusts. Okay. So these guys do actually have exposure to the underlying native crypto, the grayscale trusts do. So for those people that say that they don't know what the hell they're talking about. Don't even listen to that crap. Okay. <clears throat> so this is uh the portfolio as of right now and again we're down a little bit but that's of course because we haven't bought an etcg lately and that's kind of weighing down the portfolio but you guys can see that we got in on these just recently because these are new and they've already bounced okay so i'd say our timing so far is pretty good but we'll see <coughs> so 
Uh, one more thing before we get into the charts that I want to go ahead and squash right here. A lot of people are saying, oh, well, you know, why'd you sell that LTZ and why'd you sell that BCHG? Guys, this is how the smart money does it, okay? They want you to hold on as long as humanly possible, believing that the prices are never going to go down. And when they go down 70%, you guys are going to be tripping, flipping out, being like, what the hell? I just lost 70% of my money. And we're, we're literally here telling you guys, like, look, look at this Bitcoin chart. You see this MACD death cross? This MACD death cross, the last time this happened, Bitcoin and crypto went into a crypto winter. It was a year long. Okay. It was from November 2021 to November 2020, 2022. I'm literally going to show you the chart right now. They want you to believe that there's not going to be a dump. Okay. This thing's get, just going to go to a gazillion dollars and it's never going to go down. And guys, I'm telling you right now, that's ridiculous. That's exactly how smart money tries to play people, tries to manipulate them psychologically. So see this MACD death cross? Boom. Massive drop. I'm actually going to measure this for you guys. So huge, huge drop on Bitcoin. Okay. 73%. You can only imagine what happened to the alts and the grayscale trusts. And again, this MACD death cross here, if I could just measure it, boom, massive 53%. I think something like this is going to happen with crypto and the grayscale trusts if we get a play out of this MACD death cross. If it's not a fake out, if it's a fake out, well, okay, you know, I was wrong. But um, again, these are rare signals. I mean, the last time this happened was only twice in the last three years. And then we have it again here. You guys can't really see it that well, but there's one here for 2019. What happened? Boom. Big drop. I can't even measure this. So <laughs> sorry. Give me a sec, guys. So pretty, pretty substantial drop here. Okay. About 73%. And again, another MACD death cross here on the peak of the 2017 cycle. It was a little bit late, but even if we measure that from exactly where the MACD death cross was to the low, 82% down. On Bitcoin, not altcoins, not the grayscale trusts that have exposure to altcoins. Okay, I can tell you guys right now, if Bitcoin goes down 50%, the grayscale trusts are probably going to go down like 60, 70%. So why do we sell out of our positions? Because we anticipate that something like that's going to happen and we want to be able to buy the dip. Does it mean that we're not going to be buying crypto in the meantime? No. No. Uh, we plan on buying more of the native cryptocurrencies because we want to get more heavily allocated into the positions that we're most bullish on there while we're simultaneously waiting for some of these grayscale trust prices to drop. And yes, I'm telling you guys right now, we think they're going to drop. If this plays out, this right here, and Bitcoin goes down to, let's say, this monthly trend line, which again would pretty much be an exact repeat of this, except this is a weekly trend line. See how it got overextended and then boom, dropped. You can see this resistance line up here too. Dropped into the monthly and weekly support. We could see something just like that this time around. And if we do, you know, if you guys, hey, if you guys want to hold down 70% from current prices, that's your choice. I'm not trying to spook you guys or anything like that. I'm just being real with you about what's going on here, okay? But as for us, we got out of our positions and we're going to sit on some cash for a while in case the prices drop and we'll buy back in when it makes sense. Um, <clears throat> so anyways, let's go ahead and get into the content. I don't, I don't want to keep beating a dead horse here. I mean, look guys, if you don't want to take profit, that's your choice. We're going to take profit. Okay. There's, there's really only one way to make money when you long the market. You have to close your position and take profit. If you don't, if you just look up the Dogecoin millionaire on YouTube and you guys will see what I'm talking about. This dude bought Dogecoin at like a penny or something like that and held it up to a value of $3 million. His portfolio went from 50,000 to 3 million and he never sold. And guess what? It went back down to 50,000 and he's had to wait this entire time to get back in the green four years or well, technically two years, but two years is a long time to not be, you know, at $3 million. So any, anyways, you guys do what you want with that. Um, so LTCN. So as you guys can see here, we do have this trend line. Um, we did get rejected off of it four times. Now this red candle here is a lower low. Okay. So we have a high, a low, 
a lower high and a lower low. Now, it doesn't seem like this is a lower low, but I can tell you guys it is right now because, again, the red candle body close was lower than this green candle body close right here. <clears throat> now, does it mean it has to dump? No. Because, again, we saw something back here, although we didn't really have the lower highs and lower lows. It was just kind of a pop and a drop into the trend line, and then we went up. Um, I mean, I'll be realistic with you guys. It could stop at this support, or it could come down to this trend line. We'll do the measurements either way. So again, support is going to be 23 and a half to 27. The swing high up here is um, $55 or so right around the control bar. And again, the control bar is this thing right here. Uh, once we get past this, we'll shoot up to 75 and then we'll talk about the prices uh, beyond that at that point. But basically the prices beyond the control bar is 75, 100, and $135. Okay. So... It could stop anywhere in the support, or it could go down to this first trend line here, which is also a possibility. It did kind of ride this thing for quite a long time, so it would make sense for it to come back to it. So again, that's your support, and your your um, trend line here is going to be about 16 bucks as of this current week. So if we measure it from the trend line, if you guys wanted to wait to get in there all the way to the recent swing high, you'd be looking at 220%. And again, we'll just say around the middle of the zone here um, to the recent swing highs, about 120% move. <clears throat> so BCHG, again, this thing is, it does kind of look like it's starting to create a small bear trend here. So a high, a low, and then a lower high and a lower low. As you guys can see, we got the opposite here. So we got a low, a high, a higher low and a higher high, which again is a bull trend. This is basic trading, guys. Basic day trading, basic swing trading one-on-one -on -one right here, okay? So again, this candle body, um, if we look at this, it did actually close below this green candle body here, but of course you have this massive bullish wick. So for BCHG, I'm not so certain about where the price is going to go like I am with LTCN. I think LTCN is going to drop some more next week, but we'll just have to wait and see. Uh, for BCHG, it's uh, kind of an unknown at this point. So we'll just go with what we got. And the support is at 1020 to 1270. Resistance, $18 to 20 bucks. And the previous swing high up here at 24. Now, again, if this thing drops below support and goes down here to this support, um, this would be between seven to eight dollars, or we'll just say seven to seven seventy to be a little bit more accurate. So from the current price to the swing high, you'd be looking at about 90% from the bottom of that zone to the swing high, you'd be looking at as much as 127%. And then from this zone down here to the swing high, you'd be looking at <clears throat> as much as 217%. So HN, again, this thing has come down quite a bit. It's definitely looking more bearish. We kind of got that bear trend momentum going on. So down, uh, lower high, down, lower high down again so um but if i'm being completely honest uh i really just don't want to pick this up until it gets exactly into the box because because we're already in the bull run and it seems like maybe we're through the halfway point at this point with bitcoin forming that macd death cross uh from this point going forward in the grayscale trust we kind of want to position trade we don't want to dca in anymore we just want to wait for a zone it hits the zone of course, we're not saying this is a guarantee that we're going to do this, okay? So if we say we're going to do something, we can change our mind anytime. Just understand that because we're operating based on what the market tells us. But it's kind of our thesis that we're basically going to be looking to position in a significant amount of money into any one of these zones we think it's going to bounce off of. That's how we're going to do this. So again, that zone is between 380 to 420. And yeah, sure, it's pretty close, but we want to see it get closer. So resistance is $7 to about 810. And then the swing high up here is about 1050-ish out of that failed bull flag there. So from the um, from the support zone to the swing high, you'd be looking at 165% move. ETCG, this thing did have a nearly perfect bounce off of that bottom um, part of the channel there. I pretty much told you guys I suspected that was going to hold, and it did, although this is a lower candle. So uh, 
yeah, it's a bit concerning, but um, we'll just kind of have to wait and see how this plays out. So if it doesn't hold the channel, uh, potentially maybe down to 750, I just don't know at this point because this is a kind of a very choppy looking market. It's very hard to read, but uh, the current support is basically 1115 to, I guess, this upper bound that we're inside of here at 13. So anywhere in there is a good position to buy at currently. 20 to 1750 is your top resistance and then you got 1580 to about $13 there so we'll just take it pretty much from the bottom of this channel and give you guys the best asymmetrical bet here uh, up to this wick high here is going to be about 74% ETH E this thing is holding the channel nicely still don't know if this is going to be a cup and handle or a basically a descending channel which again either way it's a bullish pattern um, the top of the channel would be the target for the channel. So that'd be about 30 ish dollars. And then the top of the cup and handle would be 54. Um, if we pretty much getting into this zone, so 18 all the way up to where it is currently about 21 bucks is going to be ideally the most optimal zone as of right now to get into. So from roughly around this level to the first resistance, 38%, to the second resistance, 127%, and to the uh, target high up there, 161%. So Phil G, this is actually another one that we were planning on getting into this morning, but this thing did something kind of crazy. It went from $55 to $100, and then apparently it dropped back down. I'm not sure exactly what the heck happened, but... Uh, we just saw that first thing this morning. It did a two X right out of the gate and we're like, okay, never mind. We're not going to do that. So, um, <clears throat> I'd really like to, I'd really, I think it's a good price now if I'm being honest, but I really want to see it get closer to this zone. So it's still quite a drop from the current price. It's about a $20 drop to get down here. So about 36 to $40. Then we'll seriously consider picking some up at that point. And of course the swing high up here is 398. So just from the current high to the previous high, 624%, and from the zone down here up to the high is a monstrous nearly 900%. So you guys can see why we'd want to wait for that zone down there. I mean, it's literally almost a 10x. So GBAT, uh, we did pick this one up this morning, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, even though we have a MACD death cross because, again, this thing has been beat down pretty substantially, okay? I mean, this thing has really gotten walloped. It's 81% down, and that to us is an attractive buy. So again, uh, didn't close exactly at the top of these candles, so it may come down a little bit lower. I don't know. But um, even from the current price, I mean, this is still a good deal. So again, you know, it could drop another... 50% or so sure whatever it wouldn't be the first time for us and every single time that's happening it's the price has always come back and we've always made money but from the recent um close to the high up here you're looking at 280 percent and then from the support to the high you're looking at 588 percent even if we just simply held it from the price that we got into the high up here assuming it does not go into price discovery which again i don't think that's going to happen i think all of Pretty much almost all of these grayscale trusts, if not all of them, sometime between now and Bitcoin's new all time high, which I'm pretty sure it's going to hit at the end of this year. I'm pretty confident most of these, if not all of these grayscale trusts, will achieve price discovery. But even if we just hold it till the recent swing high, that alone would be more than a 4x. It'd be like a 4.5x on our money. So. Again, it would turn two thousand into like maybe eight or nine thousand. Still a pretty good return, if you ask me. <clears throat> okay, so GLIV, this thing is getting ridiculously cheap at this point. I mean, this is wasn't expecting it to come down this fast. I'll just say that. So again, from the local high to the current price, down about seventy seven percent. Support is eleven seventy five to fifteen ten, and the resistance is way up here at this monstrous eighty dollar high. So the swing up would be about 380%. And then again, from the zone would be roughly about 486%. And keep in mind, if you bought at exactly the bottom of the zone and held to the high, you'd be looking at nearly an 8x on your money. So it's up to you guys to decide whether it's worth it to wait or not. 
uh, G Link, this thing bounced pretty much immediately off the support, so this is a significant level. Again, I would not buy this. Um, I'm just going to reiterate, I still would not buy this unless it was in the zone. So 66 to 83. Uh, $220 is the swing high here. So again, from the zone to the swing high is about 197% move. Just to give you guys an idea, from the candle down to the support would be roughly about 45%. And uh, let, let, me, let me reiterate one more thing. Okay, just because... Just because we say that we would buy something at a certain zone, even if it hits that zone, does not necessarily mean we're going to buy it, okay? I'm just saying, if we were going to buy it, if it was our intention to buy it, and we wanted to buy it, we would buy it at the zone. But even if it hits that zone, if we're not interested in buying it, we may not buy it, okay? Kind of just depends. Um, nothing's ever set in stone. There's certain particular trusts we are looking at that we're interested in buying, Um but again, we don't want to buy it unless it's that zone. So GSOL, uh, this thing is very, very choppy. But again, uh, it did kind of break this uptrend line here. And it's kind of trying to retest it. I think this thing is probably going to drop here soon. I don't know how long it's going to take. Maybe a week or two, three weeks. Uh, but when it does, I suspect it's going to come down to the support. So 170 to 200. And then 583 up there at the swing high. So the move on this would be 211%. And again, if you wanted to wait for this lower level here, which um, I'm I'm going to go on a, on a limb and say it's actually possible it could come down this low. But again, it's got to cut through the support to do that. And I'm just not sure it's going to do that. But that price is roughly about $80 to $90. And again, the swing high up here would be about 630%. So huge move. Uh, GXLM, this thing has closed below this trend line. So as of right now, we are looking for this trend line in this red EMA to hold. That's roughly about the 3150 level. And again, the swing high up here is going to be about $70. So from there to the swing high, you'd be looking at 117% move. And mana, of course, we bought this one and it bounced beautifully off that support and that channel. So again, the support is between $17 to about $20. And the swing high is $70. And again, the style of trading that we're using now, which is known as position trading, this is exactly what whales do, okay? The whales out there that have thousands or tens of thousands of Bitcoin and Ethereum and God knows whatever other kind of stock in traditional markets that trade hundreds of millions of dollars of this stuff, this is how they do it, guys. I'm literally telling you, this is how they do it, okay? So this move would be 280%. The way that they do it is they wait for a perfect, basically a perfect zone to get into. They pile everything in with zero stop losses and they wait for it to rip up to the target. Okay. And these guys have been doing it for a long time. They're very good at it. They know, they know exactly what they're doing. All right. So this is the style of trading we're using now. We're not going to DCA anymore into this. At least that's the, that's the goal. If we get something like the 2021 mid cycle chop, like we saw between May and July, where it just goes it goes down 50% in the chop sideways, we might DCA, but um, if, if we don't see that happen, we'll probably just position trade, and if we don't buy it, um, I mean, if, if we don't get the opportunity, we just simply won't buy it. So uh, last one here is Zcash. Uh, again, we got a lower candle close, and I mean, this thing is slowly heading down. We want to wait to get to get the prices in here at about 4.30 to 5.10, uh, which is support, and then 7.30 to about 8.10 on resistance. And again, we under we actually own the Z, the actual Zcash, the underlying token, so we might just skip out entirely on this trust because there's no sense in... I'm not going to say there's no sense in holding both the trust and the underlying, but I mean, we kind of want to have as much diversification as possible here, so... Uh, from zone to zone, you'd be looking at as much as 75% and then the swing high up there at 124%. <clears throat> Excuse me. So last thing I want to point out here, just so you guys notice, literally almost all of these trusts, with the exception of BCH, G, and LTCN, have a MACD death cross. Okay, I'm literally not making this stuff up. This is literally historical data. 
Okay, this is ex- this is facts. This is what the charts say. I'm not saying this. This is not my opinion. This is what the markets are telling us. Okay, every single one of these, with the exception, well, maybe ex- maybe with the exception of GSAW, but also LTC and BCHG have a death cross on the MACD on the weekly time frame. Um, and Zcash. So pretty much all of them except for four have a MACD death cross. And what does Bitcoin have? A MACD death cross on the weekly. What about Ethereum? A MACD death cross on the weekly. What about Litecoin? Uh, it doesn't have a MACD yet. A MACD death cross yet, but it looks like it's going to. Okay, I don't need to say any more about this. You guys can do what you want. If you want to hold down 80%, 70%, and again, I'm not saying that's going to happen. It could just go up. Hey, if it goes up, we still have positions. We'll make money. So you guys will make money. We'll make money. Everybody will be happy. But we'll just have to wait and see. So anyways, hope you all enjoyed this content. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you all later. Peace.